This is chapter 9 of Solutions. Section 4 is Solution Concentrations and Reactions. Generally, when we're using a solution in chemistry, we're interested in how much solute is in the solution. For instance, if it's going into a reaction, typically it's not the solvent that takes part in the reaction, but the solute. And so we want to be able to quantify how much solute we have from how much solution we're taking. So the property of a solution that allows us to do this is called the concentration. The concentration of a solution is equal to the amount of solute divided by the amount of solution. Okay. Now this is a very general formula. The amounts that it talks about can be anything really. So you can uh, measure the solute in terms of grams or milliliters or moles, depending on what type it is. And you can also measure the solution in either grams or milliliters or liters. Those are typically the units that we use for solution. Okay. Most of the time in this class, we're talking about liquid solutions. So you're taking either a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and you're dissolving it into a liquid so that the solution itself is a liquid. And so we'll want to measure the amount of solution, usually in milliliters or liters, but sometimes also in grams. Okay. But however you measure these two substances, the concentration tells you the amount of solute for a given amount of solution. So it's really a ratio, or it can be thought of as a conversion factor, we'll see later, between how much solution you have and how much solute you get. Since there are so many different ways that we can measure the amounts for both the solute and the solution, there are several different concentration units that we can get. Uh, so the first one that we're going to talk about is the mass percent, M divided by M. So if you see a bottle labeled with a percent concentration and it says M over M next to it, this is what it's referring to, the mass percent. And we can calculate this two different ways. The uh, more formal definition is that the mass percent is the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution, which would give you the fractional amount, and then you multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. Okay. So with this formula, you can measure the mass in any convenient unit. Okay. You can measure it both in grams or both in kilograms or both even in pounds or something like that. Uh, as long as the unit for mass for the solute is the same as the mass unit for the solution, then it'll cancel out and you can multiply by 100 to get a percentage. Okay. Uh, the other thing to think about here is that the mass of the solution is the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. Because mass is conserved, when we add those two together, that turns into the total mass of the solution. So there'll be some times when you're not told the mass of the solution, you're told the mass of the individual components, and you have to know to add them together. The other way to calculate or to think about mass percentage is as the number of grams of solute in 100 grams of solution. Okay. So this is sometimes a little more difficult if you're just given the amounts to calculate it this way, but this is very useful in deriving the conversion factor that corresponds to the mass percent. So if you're told that you have, say, a 10% solution by mass, or M over M, that means that you have 10 grams in 100 grams of solution. So it, it helps you to uh, develop the conversion factor, not always so helpful in actually calculating it. To look at an example, we have here, what is the mass percent when 42 grams of water is added to 8 grams of potassium chloride? And so the way they do this in practice, just to give you an idea, is they put this beaker on the scale and they zero it out. And then you put in 8 grams of potassium chloride, so that the scale says 8. And then you add water until the scale says 50, right? Because 8 plus 42 is 50. So that means the total mass of the solution is going to be 50 grams, okay? Again, you take 8 grams of solute plus 42 grams of solvent and you end up with a total of 50 grams of solution. And then to calculate the mass percent, it's very easy. Eight grams of solute out of 50 grams solution multiplied by 100 gives you a percentage of 16% by mass. Here's another example. What is the mass percent of sodium hydroxide in a solution prepared by dissolving 30 grams of sodium hydroxide in 120 grams of water, H2O? So going through step by step, we begin by analyzing the problem. We can see uh, we have 30 grams of sodium hydroxide, that's the solute. We have 120 grams of water, that's the solvent. And we want to get the mass percent, so we're going to need this formula. Okay, the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution multiplied by 100. Right, we can write down the formula, and then it's just a matter of uh, putting in the information that we have. The only thing here that's a little bit tricky is that you have to add 30 grams to 120 grams to get the total mass of the solution, which is 150 grams. Okay? Once you have that, the mass percent is just the mass of the solute, sodium hydroxide, 
divided by the solution mass multiplied by 100. So 30 out of 150 times 100 gives you a 20% solution of sodium hydroxide by mass. Here's another example. A solution is prepared by mixing 15 grams of sodium carbonate and 235 grams of water, H2O. Calculate the mass percentage of the solution. So once again, we can just label what we have. This is the solute, this is the solvent. And so the solution is gonna be 15 grams plus 235 grams. Okay? And so that's gonna be 250 grams of solution. So then the mass percent is just 15 grams of the solute divided by 250 grams of the solution multiplied by 100. And so we're gonna get an answer of C. This is breaking it down step by step again. You have analyzing the problem, you write down the formula for the concentration, and then you just plug in your values and you again get C. The next concentration we'll look at is very similar, but instead of measuring the solute and solution in terms of their mass, we measure them in terms of their volume. So this is called the volume percent V over V concentration. And this can be calculated in two ways, similar to the mass concentration. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that when you're talking about the volume concentration, you can't approximate the volume of the solution by adding up the volume of the solute and the solvent. Uh, volumes are not preserved or additive in the same way that masses are. Sometimes when you mix two things together, the way that the molecules interact cause the volume to change, expand or contract a little bit. Uh, so in this case, you're not going to be given the, independent, the individual volumes, you'll just be told the volume of the solution, or you'll have to find the volume of the solution. Okay, so there's no uh, second equation for here. Uh, but the equation for volume percent is volume of the solute divided by volume of the solution times 100. And again, you can think of this, if you're thinking in terms of conversion factors, as the number of milliliters of solute in 100 milliliters of solution. So for this equation, uh, you can use whatever volume unit you like, as long as it's the same in the numerator and the denominator, because then it'll cancel out and you'll get a pure fraction, multiply by 100 and you get a percentage. Uh, down here, you want to think in terms of milliliters in 100 milliliters. Okay, So if you have a 10% volume solution, a 10% solution by volume, that means you have 10 milliliters out of 100 milliliters. You put in 10 milliliters of the solute into the solution and you made a, a total of 100 milliliters of solution. Then the next one is sort of a combination of these two. Uh, so this is the mass to volume percent or the M over V percent concentration. This one's a little bit interesting um, because it's not a true percentage. You don't have the same units in the numerator and denominator of the ratio, so they don't cancel out. And so you can't get a pure fraction or a pure percentage. Um, so instead you have to ensure, we have to use the convention that we're always talking about grams of solute in milliliters of solution. So you can't just measure the mass in any unit and the volume in any unit. You have to use grams for the mass and milliliters for the volume. Okay, you could scale those up and down, but don't worry about that. Just use grams for the top and milliliters for the bottom. And then you can multiply it by 100 to get your percentage. Now, even though this is a little uh, unusual in this regard, this is the most common percent concentration quoted. So typically, if you see a concentration for a solution given as a percentage, uh, if it doesn't specify what kind of percentage, this is probably what it means because we're measuring the solute out in terms of mass because we often use solid solutes. Uh, and then you measure the volume of the solution because the solution itself is gonna be a liquid. So this is convenient in the way that we actually make solutions. Uh, the other way to look at this particular percentage is grams of solute out of 100 milliliters of solution. So if I have a 10% uh, mass over volume, concentration solution. That means I have 10 grams of solute in 100 milliliters of solution. So again, this is useful for figuring out the conversion factor. Now let's take a look at how we can express those conversion factors for these different concentration units. So the first one we have is 8.50% by mass, mass over mass of sodium hydroxide. Uh, so that means that we have 8.50 grams of sodium hydroxide out of 100 grams of solution. Okay, so we drop the percentage and then we just take the number out of 100. Okay, and then we can look to what kind of percentage it is to tell us our units. In this case, it's mass over mass, so I can put grams over grams. Okay, it would also work out if I put 8.50 kilograms per 100 kilograms of solution. If we scale them both up by the same factor, you get the same proportion or the same ratio. Uh, so that's fine, but typically we stick with grams for the masses. 
uh, volume over volume is very similar. You drop the percentage, and so you get 5.75, but now we're dealing with volumes, so this is going to be milliliters out of 100 milliliters. Okay, the top is the solute, which in this case is ethanol. It's measured in uh, milliliters because it's a liquid, and then the denominator is always solution, the total solution, not just one part, not just the solvent or something like that. Uh, so this is for volumes, right? We could, again, use liters over liters or something else, but as long as they're in the same unit, it's fine. For the last one, it's a mass over volume. So in this case, we need to use those specific units. So we're going to, again, drop the percentage and put 4.8. And now the numerator is going to be mass, right? So that's going to be grams of HCl, the solute, out of 100, but this time the denominator is in terms of volume, so it'll be out of 100 milliliters of solution. Okay, so this is our conversion factor here. And so again, we could scale both of these up. We could say kilograms per liter or something like that, but we'd have to make sure that we scale them up both by the same factor. Uh, I would recommend not confusing yourself that way, just remember in terms of grams and milliliters. So here we have a conversion factor for each, and then obviously each of these conversion factors uh, also has a corresponding reciprocal conversion factor. Here we can see both. The last concentration unit that we're going to talk about is a little bit different. It's not a percentage, uh, it's just a pure ratio between the amount of solute and the amount of solution that we have. And this is called the molarity. Okay? The molarity of a solution is uh, a unit that's abbreviated with a capital M. So if you see a number on a bottle uh, like this right here, this means one molar solution or a solution with a molarity or a concentration of 1.0. Okay? And what this really means is that it's the number of moles of solute per liters of solution. So a one molar solution is one mole of solute in one liter of solution. Okay? So one molar sodium chloride is one mole sodium chloride per one liter of solution. The way you would make this is you would put your solid into uh, some sort of measuring uh, container, like a volumetric flask here. You'd put your sodium chloride in here, the amount that you need. You'd have to figure out how much uh, mass one mole weighs using the molar mass. So that's the one complication here, but we'll see why this is a more convenient concentration unit in a little bit. Uh, but so you measure out your one mole of sodium chloride using the correct molar mass conversion, and then you just fill the uh, container up to, in this case, to the line. The volumetric flask has a, a line etched in the neck that tells you when the liquid is exactly at that line, you have exactly, uh, in this case, it would be one liter of solution. Okay? So you fill it up and then you make sure all the solid dissolves and then you have a one molar sodium chloride solution. Let's take a look at an example using the molarity concentration. This question says, what is the molarity of 0 0.500 liters of sodium hydroxide solution if that solution contains six grams of sodium hydroxide. So they're telling us what volume of the solution we have, and they're telling us the mass of the sodium hydroxide, the solute that we have. But it wants the molarity. Okay, I could easily take the mass out of the number of milliliters and figure out the percent concentrations, but we want to know the molarity. So let's take a look. Analyzing the question, we have the mass of the solute and the volume of the solution in liters. Okay. And we want to get the molarity, so the formula for molarity is moles or molar concentration equals moles of solute per liter of solution. Okay? So it's very important that you distinguish between molarity and moles. Okay? Molarity is a concentration, right? a number of moles per volume, per liter. So it's not the same as the number of moles. Okay? A lot of students confuse these two terms and want to talk about molarity when they really mean moles and vice versa. There are certain situations where you can assume a one liter volume, and so the molarity and the number of moles are interchangeable. But for the most part, you should be very clear about the difference between these two. Okay. So once we know the uh, equation, we can just write down the, the formula for the concentration we're looking for, moles per liter. And then we have to think about how to get those uh, values. So the moles of sodium hydroxide has to come from the grams of sodium hydroxide that they tell us. Okay, so that means we're going to need the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, which is 40 grams per mole. Okay, so we can take our 6 grams of sodium hydroxide, multiply it by 
the molar mass, or really one over the molar mass. So again, we're canceling out grams of sodium hydroxide. So grams of sodium hydroxide has to go on the bottom here. So that's where your 40 goes. And then one mole of sodium hydroxide goes on top. So we'll end up with this mole unit here. Okay. And so what we end up with is six grams of sodium hydroxide is actually 0 0.150 moles of sodium hydroxide. And now that we have that, we can just put that into the formula for the molarity. Okay, so that goes on top, that's the amount of solute in terms of moles. And then in the denominator, we want the volume of solution, but it's very important to remember that it has to be measured in liters. So if they told us that this was uh, 500 milliliters, for example, we would have to first convert to liters. Okay, this they tell us liters, so we can just put that number directly in. And then what we end up with is 0 0.150 divided by 0 0.5 is 0 0.3. And then the unit is moles of sodium hydroxide per liter, which is really another way of saying capital M molarity. So the molar concentration is 0 0.300 molar sodium hydroxide. Here's another example. What is the molarity of 0 0.225 liters of potassium nitrate solution that contains 34.8 grams of potassium nitrate? Working through this problem is really identical to the previous one. They just give us a different volume of the solution and a different mass of the solute in that. Okay, So this time, we'll need the molar mass for potassium nitrate, okay? 101.11. We can convert the mass of potassium nitrate to moles, so it'll be 0.344 moles. And then again, that goes into here in the numerator. Uh, the denominator is the, the volume in liters that they told us. And so then our answer is 1.53 molar concentration of potassium nitrate. So that's B. The units of molarity, just like the percent units, uh, can be used as conversion factors. Okay, And this is going to be very useful when we want to deal with solutions in reactions. We'll use the molarity to convert between the volume of solution and the number of moles. Okay. So for instance, if we have a molarity of 3.5 molar HCl, what that means is that one liter of this solution contains 3.5 moles of HCl. Okay. So the, there's a relationship between those two. One liter of solution corresponds to 3.5 moles. And so we have two conversion factors, one which just looks like the uh, molarity, the way we write it, and one which looks like the reciprocal. Here's a chart that summarizes a lot of that. This is useful if you're just uh, looking to review this for studying. Uh, it helps to remind you that for the percentages, you drop the percentage, but you have to take each of them out of 100, right? Either 100 grams or 100 milliliters, depending on which it is, okay? But you're dropping the percentage. For molarity, that's a different one. So keep in mind that molarity is a little bit different. It's just this number of moles out of one liter, okay? So instead of being out of 100, it's just out of one liter. So all of the concentration units express the relationship between the concentration that we calculate and the amount of solute and the amount of solution. So the most straightforward of these question types will give you two of those values and ask you to calculate the third. Okay? In this case, for instance, they're giving us a mass or an amount of solution. They're giving us a concentration of solution, and they're asking us to find an amount of solute. Okay, so the question is, how many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed to prepare 75 grams of 14% mass over mass sodium hydroxide? Okay, so 75.0 grams of 14% solution is a mass of a concentration solution. So when we analyze the problem, we're given the mass of the solution and the concentration of the solution, and we need the mass of the solute. So if we're given everything in mass and the concentration is a mass over mass, then we really need the mass over mass formula. Okay? The mass percentage equals grams of solute divided by grams of solution. And so we can look at it as a conversion factor problem, where we start with grams of solute and then we use the mass over mass percentage to calculate grams of solute. So from 100 grams of solution, we have 14 grams of sodium hydroxide. That's what 14% by mass means, right? 14 grams out of 100 grams of solution, or vice versa, right? The reciprocal. Once we have that conversion factor, then we just start from the amount of solution we're talking about, and we use the conversion factor to cancel out mass of solution, okay? And leave us with the mass of the solute. 
Okay, so 75 grams times 14% will be a 10.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. So the answer is A. Here's another example. How many grams of aluminum chloride are needed to prepare 125 milliliters of a 0 0.150 molar solution? So this is a very similar question. It's giving us a volume of solution, an amount of solution, and a concentration of solution, and asking us to find a mass of solute. So what we need to do here is uh, recognize the concentration units. Okay, That's sometimes the hardest part of these. The capital M is a concentration unit and expresses a ratio between moles of a solute and liters of solution. Okay, so once you see the capital M, you should be thinking in terms of this concentration formula. Moles or molarity equals moles divided by liter. They tell us the volume of the solution, they tell us this molarity, and they want us to find grams. Okay? The other thing we're, we're going to recognize that we need at this point is the concentration unit will end up giving us moles of aluminum chloride, so then we're also going to need the molar mass to convert that to grams. So the plan, the conversion plan, is you start from liters of solution, and the concentration always allows you to convert between the amount of solution and the amount of solute. In this case, you'll go from liters to moles because we're given the molarity. So then, once you have moles of solute, you need to use another conversion factor, the molar mass, to get from moles of solute to grams of solute, and then you'll be done. So we can write two conversion factors that we're going to need for this, right? It's a two-step conversion. The first is using the concentration, so we want to express the molar concentration as a conversion factor. So we have 0 0.150 moles in one liter, or vice versa. Uh, so these are the two conversion factors, and then the other one is the molar mass conversion factor. One mole of aluminum chloride weighs 133.33 grams, so we have these two conversion factors. Then we just have to set up our problem correctly. We start from the amount of solution that we're given. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a hidden conversion in here because they go from 125 milliliters directly to 0 0.125 liters. Okay, keep in mind, when you use the concentration conversion factor with molarity, the denominator is going to be liters. So you have to express this in liters. And to go from milliliters to liters, you just move the decimal place over three places. Okay, so this becomes 0 0.125 liters. So this is where they get this from. Uh, then they multiply it by the molarity, 0 0.150 moles per liter, so that the liters of solution cancels the liters of solution, leaving us with moles of solute. And then they multiply by the molar mass to cancel out moles of solute with moles of solute and leave grams of solute, the solute being aluminum chloride. And so you end up with 2.50 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, that's C. This brings us to chemical reactions involving solutions. Okay, many chemical reactions involve substances in solution. It's a very effective way to mix two reactants together uh, when they might not otherwise mix very readily in the solid state or in some other form. Uh, so this is used in a, a wide variety of chemical reactions. Okay, but recall again one more time that the chemical reaction or the chemical equation, I should say, uh, always relates mole quantities of the substances. Okay, remember those mole to mole ratios. So when we dealt with solids, we needed to measure them in their mass, weigh them out, but then use the molar mass to convert mass to moles. When we dealt with gases, we could uh, determine the properties of the gas in terms of the pressure and the volume and the temperature, and we needed the ideal gas law to convert those properties to the number of moles of gas. Okay? So in each of these cases, we were ultimately trying to get the moles of the substance. Here is the same. Now that we're dealing with solutions, we want to be able to relate the volume of the solution, which is the thing that we can easily measure, to the moles of the solute in the solution, which is the thing that we're actually interested in for the reaction. And so the concentration is now what's going to allow us to do that. So take an example like this. Zinc reacts with HCl to produce hydrogen gas, H2, and zinc chloride. Okay? Uh, so this is the balanced chemical equation. Zinc uh, one mole of zinc plus two moles of HCl gives you one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of zinc chloride. So how many liters of a 1.5 molar HCl solution completely react with 5.32 grams of zinc? Let's analyze the problem. They give us the mass of zinc, 5.32 grams of zinc. 
The other thing they give us is the concentration of HCl. Okay, again, once you see the capital M, that should indicate to you that this is the concentration of this solution. Okay, and then they also give us the balanced chemical equation. So they're telling us the amount of zinc that we have, and they want to know how much HCl we'll need, right? Because the equation reacts zinc with HCl, and there's a ratio between the two. So we want to know how much HCl, but it's not pure HCl, it's HCl in a solution. So we really want to know how many liters of this HCl solution we need, okay? Liters of HCl solution. So we're going to need several things here. If we want liters of HCl solution, well, that's going to have to come from knowing how many moles of HCl we need. And if we start with the mass of zinc, we're going to have to convert that to moles of zinc. Okay? So the molar mass will help us convert zinc to moles. And then the mole to mole factor will help us relate moles of zinc to moles of HCl. And then the moles of HCl can be related to the volume by using the molarity, which we were given. So this is the plan that we can set up. Okay, you go from grams of zinc and use the molar mass to convert that to moles of zinc. Now you can use the mole to mole factor from the chemical equation to relate moles of zinc to moles of HCl. Okay, moles of one reactant to moles of another because they're in a certain ratio. You have one mole of zinc for every two moles of HCl. And then once you have moles of HCl, you use the concentration to determine how many liters of solution that will be. We can write down all these conversion factors. We have the molar mass of zinc. We have the mole to mole factor between zinc and HCl from the equation, right? Two moles of HCl for every one mole of zinc, two to one or vice versa. And then we have the concentration unit. 1.50 molar means 1.50 moles per one liter, okay? Or again, the reciprocal. And then, as usual, it's just a matter of putting these conversion factors in the right order and picking the right one so that the units cancel out. Remember, again, we're starting with an amount of zinc, and we want to relate that to a volume of solution. Okay? So the amount of zinc is 5.32 grams. We first want to convert that to moles by dividing by the molar mass so that the grams of zinc cancels out. That leaves us moles of zinc. Then we can use the mole to mole factor to relate moles of zinc, make sure that cancels out and obtain moles of HCl. And then we wanna use the concentration unit to go from moles of HCl to the volume. So this one, be careful because you're really dividing by the concentration. 1.50 moles goes on the bottom so that moles of HCl cancels moles of HCl and that leaves you with liters of solution on top. Okay, so this uh, final answer is in liters that should really be saw, thought of as liters of solution, of HCl solution. Okay, and when you multiply all these things together, you get 0 0.108. So it's uh, 108 milliliters, or in this case, they want it in liters, so 0 0.108 liters is fine. This last chart is more conceptual, but I think it's very important for helping to understand uh, how chemistry works and how the last three chapters in particular relate to one of the central problems of chemistry, which is relating the moles of one substance in a chemical reaction to the moles of another substance in a chemical reaction. Okay? So we have some amount of A and we want to figure out how much B we need. Either we want to figure out how much of one reactant we need to react with another reactant, or we want to figure out how much product we can get from a reactant or how much reactant we need to make a certain amount of product. Again, it doesn't really matter how you interpret it as long as you're trying to transform the amount of one substance in a chemical reaction to another substance in a chemical reaction, this is the kind of chart you'll need. Okay? And it all goes through the moles. Okay? So because the chemical equation relates mole ratios, you're always going to have to figure out how moles of A relate to moles of B in this type of problem. And that's going to be through the mole to mole conversion factor, which is directly from the chemical equation, right? These mole to mole factors are just from the coefficients in the chemical, the balanced chemical equation. Uh, so this is central to all of these parts. But what we've seen in the last few chapters is that there are many different ways that we can measure A and of course, many different ways that we can also measure B. So depending on how we measure it, depending on what state it's in, there's gonna be uh, other factors at the beginning and end of a problem like this. So for example, if we start with a mass of A, because A is a solid and it's easy to measure out A in terms of its mass, then we have to use the molar mass to get to moles of A. Okay? 
And then once we have moles of A, we can figure out moles of B. And then depending on what B is, we can choose one of these other three methods to figure out how we're going to quantify B. Okay, if B is also a solid, then we can just use its molar mass and get its mass. If B is a gas, then we want to know the pressure and temperature conditions in order to figure out the volume. Right? And if uh, B is in solution, then we want to figure out the concentration of that solution to uh, determine the volume that we need. Okay? So wherever you start on the left-hand side, you have to go through the central part, but you can end up anywhere you want on the right-hand side, depending on the, uh, the context of the question and what it's asking you for. Okay? So you can go from mass to mass, mass to liters of solution, mass to liters of, of gas, um, and vice versa, right? You can go from gas volume to mass and all this. Okay? So understanding this helps you to understand uh, a wide variety of problems that are central to chemistry, where we're trying to predict how much of one substance we need based on how much of another substance we have.